there is a valedictory function in which honorable vice chancellor career point university will be the chief guest and uh, professor dr mahavir singh from himachal pradesh university shimla will be our guest of honor let me introduce professor dr mahavir singh he is working in department of physics in himachal pradesh university shimla his skills and expertise are in ferrites magnetic properties magnetization particle size and thin films he has more than 314 publications in national and international journals he has completed more than 8 projects and is having more than 3500 citations he has also served as vice chancellor of iec university himachal pradesh now i shall not keep you waiting long for the first session i would like to request mr nikesh to please confirm that our speaker has joined us has joined us okay uh, the speaker for the session is dr samir kumar let me introduce him dr samir has more than 3232 citations he has more than 54 publications he has done his mtech in material science from nit hamirpur he has done his phd from iit delhi his area of interest dr kumar has extensively done his research in tailoring the nanomorphology by physical self assembly induced unique nano structured fabrications technique which is called as glancing angle deposition glad these structures have essential applications in developing novel optical films as a plasmonic substances sorry plasmonic substrate for surface enhanced raman scattering water repellent surfaces biochemical sensing photocatalysis and thermo photovoltaics currently he is working in kyoto university japan so i would like to request dr samir to please uh, start the session dr samir please yeah uh, thank good morning everyone and thank you for the introduction so let me share my presentation okay so is it visible no so it's not visible yet it's not shared yet google meet is sharing a window i've already shared share again is okay uh I think there is some internet problem, Dr. Rahul Gandhi. The presentation was visible, sir. Was visible? Okay, and, and I think there is a delay. Yes, yes, it was visible. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, there is some delay. Yes, it is. Okay, it is visible. The presentation is visible. Okay. Okay, so good morning, everyone, again, and uh, thank you for the nice introduction. So I'll be talking about uh, sculpture thin films and their biosensing applications using surface enhanced Raman scattering. So I'll just start with a brief introduction of Raman and the glad glancing deposition technique, and then I'll discuss different types of such substances that we have developed. Uh, to overcome some difficulties or the disadvantages of those substrates so let's begin so as you may already know the raman effect many of you may already know so it is an elastic scattering process where the scattered light has a different energy than the incident light some of the scattered light and that difference in energy is directly related to is equivalent to that of the vibration and energy level of the scattering molecules hence uh, it, it gives lots of information about the chemical nature of the molecule and it is a very powerful technique and it was first observed by sir c v raman in 1928 and he was awarded the nobel prize within 2 years in 1930 so and it has various advantages like uh, 
it's a kind of fingerprint of the molecule and it, and it can be used with any solid or liquid substrates, uh, sub samples. It basically needs no sample preparation and is non-destructive and required very small time for the collection of data. The question is, if it's so powerful and it has been for more than 70 years since its discovery, then it's not, why it's not used that extensively? So reason is because it has few disadvantages, like uh, it's very weak phenomena. Only one in a million photons are Raman scattered. And also for some molecules, it is swamped by the fluorescence background. So the question is how to remove that disadvantages and that signal can be enhanced. The Raman signal can be enhanced using surface enhanced Raman scattering. And the surface enhanced Raman scattering is nothing but the enormous enhancement, more than 10 to about 10 times the enhancement of Raman intensity by molecule near the vicinity of rough metal surfaces. So I'll not go into detail of this scattering phenomena. So, but uh, how exact uh, the theory of SARS is, the SARS phenomena is not completely known, but uh, there are two major theories that are widely agreed upon uh, about the enhancement mechanism and of which one is the electromagnetic enhancement mechanism and the second is chemical enhancement mechanism. And the major contribution is from the electromagnetic enhancement that is due to the surface plasmon of uh, the metal surf and the dielectric surface or the metal nanoparticles uh, localized uh, surface plasmon of the metal nanoparticles and they are the major contribution uh, to the source with enhancement factor of around 10 over 6 to 10 over 8. So the aim of all the material scientists is to synthesize or create nanoparticles or assemble or uh, fabricate such substrate that can enhance this electromagnetic enhancement. So there are various methods for the this substrate fabrication and such substrate are nothing but uh, any metallic or nanostructure that produces source enhancement. And there are various methods, but for a good source substrate, there are a few uh, points that they have to satisfy. First is that the enhancement factor should be very high. They should be easy and cheap to prepare and they should be reproducible. So there are various methods and like what method is the metal nanoparticles in colloids are deposited on a planar substrate from the colloid. So they have the highest enhancement factor, even detecting up to the single molecular level, but they are also cheap and easy, but they lack the reproducibility because of the non-uniformity of the aggregation of the nanoparticles and the size of the nanoparticle. So the next, you can get the reproducibility and the high enhancement using lithographic techniques by preparing nanostructures using lithographic techniques. But those techniques are very expensive and highly complex and require maintenance. And the third technique is a vapor deposition technique, which is relatively less expensive and produces good reproducibility. But the problem is it, it lacks the enhancement uh, or has a relatively lower enhancement than the colloidal solution or the met, uh, metal nanoparticle fabric, uh, nanostructures fabricated unit using nanolithographic techniques. So along with that limitation uh, for the fabrication process, there is other limitations of such substrate also, that is the, after the fabrication, one is that these substrates are rigid and brittle. So mostly the substrates, they are fabricated on SiO2 or silicon wafer. And so that limits the application uh, of these uh, substrates. And also the mostly silver and gold are uh, deposited on silicon again, and they have very poor addition with the silicon and glass and it, they can easily peel off. So we have to use another 
like titanium or chromium layer adhesion layer for adhesion. So that's an additional step in the fabrication process. That uh, and the third problem is the mostly these surface substrate are 2D planar systems. So the number of hot spot or the position where the enhancement factor is maximum is very limited to only the 2D space. And the fourth one is since these are gold and mainly gold and silver, they are expensive metals and we are just using it for one time. So non-reusability is another limiting factor for this substance. So I'm mainly my research focus is on the fabrication of such substrate by glancing angle deposition and the uh, thin films fabricated by this glancing angle deposition are also called sculptured thin films it is called sculptured thin films because we can uh, tune the morphology uh, of these thin films during the growth itself by changing the rotation or the speed or the angle of this uh, nanostructure during fabrication itself and we can grow different type of nanostructure like this vertical columns or slanted nano column or zigzag and the advantage of using this glancing deposition is that it can form nano column arrays naturally so you don't need any kind of lithographic highly expensive lithographic techniques or any seed layer you can use seed layer also for more uniformity but it is not necessary you can also without seed layer get these nano columns also and second is it using the single technique you can generate different kind of nanostructures for the same material and has high enhancement good uniformity and it is since it is a physical vapor deposition technique it is a straightforward fabrication method with lots of control on different parameters so my focus on today's talk will be on four types of substrate fabrication one is the gel based cell substrate for the collection of biomarkers from directly from the skin the second is flexible and robust cell substrate third is 3d types cell substrate for detection of bacteria and the fourth one is the zigzag vertically standing zigzag cell substrate in the last part we have uh, enhance the hotspot in the third dimension and uh, I'll not be talking about the recycled stuff substrate but I also worked on that so first the brief introduction in of the GLAD so glancing angle deposition is a physical vapor deposition technique in which the substrate is held the substrate normal makes a very large angle with the incident flux and also it can rotate okay it's not like okay sorry and also this substrate can rotate in both azimuth and polar plane so that we can control the norm morphology so simply in in, in simpler terms we can say that uh, during the initial growth random nuclei on the substrate due to the surface roughness and some of the nuclei are larger than the smaller nuclei and they receive maximum flux and the region behind them and the smaller nuclei behind them and since they are larger they receive again receive larger flux and grows in direction of the incident flux because of the self shadowing effect effect so we so using this we can form the nano column column very easily and by controlling the rotation speed we can make different nano structures by if the rotation is speed is slow then we can get coil type of structure and if it's very fast then we can get vertical columns and also not just the azimuthal rotation if we rotate it uh, not just the polar rotation if we rotate it into azimuth plane by changing the direction of deposition by different 
like 180 degree we can get this kind of chevron zigzag structure and this sort of kind of structure also by changing the speed of the period of erosion so you can see we, different kind of structures can be grown using just simply changing the rotation and reversion so this is the first type of such substrate and this is the gel based such substrate so in in this substrate the uh, the main aim th this is the work that i have been doing in this kyoto university and the main aim of this uh, gel based such sensor is to collect uh, or to develop a such sensor that can be used at home and can be detected using held hand step spectrometer uh, and can be applied to like baby or mother and we can and in the form of tube or face mask that is cheaply available in the market and using handheld spectrometer we can like measure the stress and other parameters so for the fabrication of this gel based sir sensor to first we fabricated the sir substrate and for and that sir substrate has to be very good with has to be with very good enhancement factor so for that we fabricated a multi layer thin film structure of silver sio2 and gold silver nanoparticles and it has an enhancement factor of more than 10 to the power 7 so it's a very good uh, such substrate and first silver of 200 around 200 nanometer was deposited silver film at 0 degree then sio2 film of around 100 nanometer at 0 degree and then sio2 phase layer was deposited at 83 degree from two opposite sides is called serial by deposition so after a deposition of 50 degree we rotated the angle by 180 degree and like this the deposition was done 50 nanometer 50 nanometer 50 nanometer so up to 500 nanometer and after that gold uh, silver sorry was deposited at 73 degree on tip of these nano rods for about 1 to 25 nanometers and this type of elongated nano rods ag nano rod was aligned ag nano rods was formed so this is uh, so this is a uh, again rigid substrate so the question is how to collect the biomarker from skin so for that we used the gel and that is the hydroxyethyl cellulose gel so that's very commercially available in various cosmetics and shampoos also it is used uh, highly popular so it's already known to be safe for human skin so we we use this uh, hc gel and uh, the second point is that uh, we have to optimize the particle size so because our the length of our silver nano rods it's 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 in microns the top surface so our the dispersion in gel that should not be less than the 10 microns because then it will lose its uh, property of self of the, that or it will be there will be loss in the such uh, enhancement factor and the second is that uh, due around this dimension size these particles are safe for the human body also so first we mixed this hc and the previously prepared such substrate but this time we prepared on mica because mica sheet we can make very thin and it can be easily uh, broken into finer particles so for that purpose we have done the growth on mica this time and deposited and and mixed it with the hc gel for different times in a centrif application mixture and this is the microscopic image and this is the real sample image so what we observe that with time the average size 
of the particle it decreases and since there is this different centrifugal force at different parts so we have divided into it into three regions center middle and edge and around 4 to 5 minutes after so all these regions have almost similar sizes so we sent uh, fused our sample for around 4 to 5 minutes and the next is we next want to optimize the or to get the maximum enhancement factor and for that we optimize the pcl thickness and we found that for 5 minute of mixing and for the pcl is the phase control layer and for the dpcl of 105 nanometer it is giving the maximum surge enhancement so we utilize this sample for our sensing application so so using this we detected different biomarkers and chemicals this is the standard raman pro and you can see we can detect up to 1 micromole per liter and also we were able to successfully detect bilirubin which is the biomarker for the um, jaundice so and also we detected cortisol which is the biomarker for it is released during stress so this is also a biomarker so this this gel removes the limitation that of the rigid substrate that you the rigid substrate you directly cannot apply to any surface and collect or uh, the sample from the surface but using this gel you can put on apply on a surface and you can feed it after drying or you can take the measurement even before drying also from the back because it's transparent so next uh, is the flexible surge substrate and in this substrate surge substrate uh, i have developed two kinds of substrates one is a uh, 3d cage type surge substrate for the and the one is the robust flexible surge substrate so the first this i'll start with this robust surge substrate and this surge substrates uh, substrate remove the limitation the of the peeling off from the surface so for fabricating this surge substrate first silver nano rods were deposited on silicon wafer of around 1 micron length then liquid pdms was poured on it and it was cured for 30 minutes at 80 degree temperature and we peeled it up to 30 minutes and then surge measurement were done on this substrate so this is the Hermann spectra of rhodamine six G is a standard probe, ten minus four molar rhodamine rhodamine six G, with uh, for black curve is for the silver nanorods, and the red curve is for the red uh, silver nanorods embedded inside the PDMS, and the blue curve is the thin film. So that's that that just for the reference. So we can see there is a slight loss in the intensity for the nanorods after embedding but still it's in good enough for the practical purposes so that, that not very much loss in the enhancement factor so and this curve shows the variation in the intensity and we can so we can see that it's it's highly reproducible so with less than 20% variation in the intensity and it has a detection limit of 10 to minus 12 molar so it's highly sensitive we can see here that you can see the small peaks and it's it's relatively smaller but if we you, you zoom it and see it, then it's quite significant peak it has around 10 to 3 uh, intensity so it's not that small it's just relatively smaller to these peaks so the advantage of this oh it's not right okay so there was a video actually so it's not running i don't know so actually so this is our substrate so what we did we do this scotch tape and 
put it on this our substrate and we peeled it and no f there was no peeling of of substrate even from using this scar step so it's a very robust substrate and the second advantage is that it is flexible so you can put it or apply on a surface and then you can collect the data so for this purpose we uh, have shown the application of for the detection of pesticide and for that we use an apple and apply different concentration of uh, pesticide on it and then we put our substrate with the metal and particle facing towards the apple and then we apply some ethanol so that acts as a solution and then we peel off the this PDMS substrate and after drying we took the source measurement for this and we were able to detect up to one micro molar of this pesticide and that was around 10 times lower concentration than, than the permissible limit of uh, the pesticide in the farming so it's really like good for practical application and it's robust and has good adhesiveness to the substrate and the second flexible substrate it, uh, we produced it's mainly for the detection of bacteria or larger molecules larger uh, bio molecules so for that purpose we first clamped the PDMS the same PDMS on using the two clamps and we then stretched it to different uh, strain and but for this sole purpose we stretched it up to 30 percent because we have already tuned this this uh, stretching uh, with this uh, formation of these wrinkles so we know how much stretching is required to make these the uh, wrinkles so, and after that we deposited silver nanorods and then we put uh, bacteria on top of it did the measurement and then we released strain and then again did the measurement so on releasing the strain these kind of wrinkles are formed and because of the difference in the Young's modulus between the silver layer and the pigment layer so this is the SEM image of the pre-stressed silver PDMS and after releasing the strain these kind of wrinkles are formed and these wrinkles are around 2 to 3 micron in size the, uh, the amplitude of these wrinkles and that is equal to the size of the bacteria that we have utilized so the our main purpose was to capture the bacteria within this region so as to collect uh, touch so that it will touch the bacteria from sites also so this shows the sus for the bacteria for before and after releasing the stress and we can clearly show that you see that there is around 11 times enhancement in the sus signal of the bacteria and uh, we can explain it like this uh, when the bacteria is on a planar substrate only the nanorod tips so tips are the hot spots or has you can say the are the position for the maximum enhancement for cells and only those tips are touching from the bottom part only the bacteria but when we release the stress the bacteria is captured within this cage from the wrinkles from the two sides also now the number of hot spots that are touching the bacteria that increases and that may be the reason for the increase in the source and and the second uh, so hence we, we we enhances the number of hot spot in the third dimension also using this technique and the third part is the vertically standing silver zigzag substrate so for this we fabricated two types of nanostructure one pure silver nanostructure zigzag nanostructure forearm and 
the second nanostructure that we fabricated, we put small amount of aluminium. We grow small amount of aluminium at the elbow between these two silver arms. So the first structure is purely silicon, uh, silver, and the second for the second we first grow one arm um, silver, then grow around 50 nanometer aluminium. Then we rotate it by 180 degree, and then again deposited silver. So like this, we grow one arm, two arm, three arm, and four arm zigzag nano structure. So by doing this, what we found that for the pure silver nanostructure, the surge enhancement increases with the arm number. So, so you are like going in the third dimension. You are increasing the hotspot in the third dimension without taking much space in the substrate. And the, and the second structure, and okay. Then after depositing the aluminium, we also etched out the aluminium later using HCl to form nano gap in this arm. So and that further increases the surge signal. So we can see like for two arm it's like double, and also for three arm it the signal it, it doubles. So by creating the nano gaps, we can further improve the surge signal. So, in conclusion, so what we have done, we have removed the limitation of surge substrate. So, since they are mostly 2D planar substrate, we fabricated two types of surge substrate, vertical zigzag and the case type structure to remove this limitation and remove the rigidity and brittleness by producing gel based surge substrate and also by embedding it into the polymer. And uh, also, we removed the poor adhesion by embedding it in, inside the PDMS. And I've also fabricated recyclable silver TiO2 source substrate, but not discussed in this talk. So, in conclusion, thank you, uh, my collaborator uh, from Kyoto University and the lab members. Thank you very much. Now the session is open for the questions. If any participant want to ask questions from Dr. Sameer, then please go ahead. Is there any question from the audience? Anyone who want to ask any question? Uh, Dr. Sameer, there is one query that uh, what role do the uh, silver and gold fabrication play in nano rods? Actually, they are the you can say they are the material that is producing these surfs. Without gold and silver, you cannot get those surface uh, localized plasmon, and you cannot enhance that thermal signal. So they are the most important part of this for enhancing the thermal signal. So basically, these are synthesized in situ. Means uh, when we are doing the reaction or synthesizing the nano rods, they are getting synthesized at the same time, or we are synthesizing them first and then fabricating. No, 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 no. So we are using physical vapor deposition. So we are evaporating silver and gold, and during evaporation itself, when these are, uh, we are forming these nano rods. So no other step. <laughs> During the portion itself, these nano rods are growing, you, and we can control that using different parameters like rotation speed or angle. Okay. Mm, is there any question from the audience? Uh, okay. If there is no question, I think everybody wants me to express the gratitude to you, sir, for such a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much for joining us. You're always welcome in our university for the coming workshops in the future. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you for, the, for inviting me also. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. OK, now uh, let's move on to the uh, next part of this.
fifth day of workshop to the valedictory function. In the valedictory function, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Career Point University, Professor Dr. K. S. Verma. He will cheer us shortly. Uh, let me introduce first Professor Dr. K. S. Verma. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce Professor Dr. K. S. Verma, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Career Point University. He was born in village Dumeher of uh, Tehsil Khumarmi, District Vilaspur, on 16th of September 1957. Having done his primary and higher education from the local school, he went on to pursue his bachelor's and master's degree in soil science and water management, followed by his doctoral degree on fruit nutrition and orchard management. Since then, he remained on various positions in various institutes of national and international repute. He has a vast experience in teaching, which is evident with his experience of 23 years with forestry and 21 years with agroforestry and 20 years with the research, guiding 28 research scholars at doctoral level. Apart from teaching, Professor Verma has undertaken several different projects from national and international funding agencies, the latest being from the ISRO, Indian Space Organization, Dehradun. Professor Verma has also organized various international workshops, seminars, and conferences within the country in the field of higher education. He has also experience of working in the Tertiary Authority and Forum of Universities such as Board of Studies, Academic Council, and Board of Management with Dr. Y. S. Parmar University of Horticulture and Forestry, Noni Solon, College of Horticulture, Forestry, Neri Hamirpur, and HP Forest Cards Examinations. He has also served as nodal officer of various learning programs, project of impact of hydropower, projects on environment in Himachal Pradesh, and integrated argument advisory services, IMD New Delhi. To his credit, Professor Verma has also served as chairman and deputy coordinator, International Union of Forestry Research Organization, Vienna, Austria, and has received funding in Roads for Sustainment of Forestry. He's also served as consultant at 9th Indian Youth Science Congress, jointly organized by MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, Chennai and Career Point University. So I would like uh, now to Professor Dr. K. S. Verma, I would like to request him to please enlighten us with his words. Dr. Verma will join us shortly due to some technical problems. He will join us after a few minutes. Stay tuned with us. We are, we are having a special guest who has received his PhD in Applied Physics from Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. India, 
Tutala Institute for Nanotechnology, King Saud University, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Now he will conclude this workshop. Uh, I would request Dr. Khalid to please chair the session. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate all the speakers. At the same time, I would like to congratulate the university for organizing this workshop on, on uh, different topics. It has been always a pleasure uh, to speak friendly, uh, to discuss the various hot topics in science, especially the modern trends in the science, uh, what you know, we are facing is a COVID situation related to that are without uh, yet the people are trying to relate it COVID-19 with something nanoparticles how we can uh, use the nanoparticles how we can use different ty ty uh, types of functional materials in order to deal such a pandemic at the same time uh, the speakers uh, spoke about uh, different topics of uh, function nuclear facilities uh, one of the speakers as I saw last time uh, the issue with organizing these webinars is that we are not in a position to take uh, this uh, the face value of this organized, uh, you know, these programs when relate our issues, we can relate our uh, questions. This pandemic is going to be soon over. Uh, the university is going to organize these uh, conferences and uh, students can be benefited by the face interactions where uh, they can put up the proposals also they can collaborate with the people they can mm, know what is the model to uh, tackle the situations and uh, especially if I will go uh, in the areas such as the quantum computing which is really a very very hot topic right now where people are uh, trying to connect the internet even uh, with the quantum computing or quantum networking. Uh, recently I saw a news from the European General where people have used the uh, quantum telepathy at 40 kilometers. That has been a great achievement. At the same time in the French uh, city they used uh, quantum networking by using the two drones those two drones were one kilometer apart and uh, they could communicate with each other. So this is a requirement where especially the underdeveloping or the developing nations require these things. We have the issues of uh, water and how the water, a pure water at uh, the cheapest price can reach to every home where uh, we have the issues of uh, like a, uh, like a severe system how the pure uh, water can be regenerated for by uh, using this nanotechnology in dealing this uh, severe systems instead of someone is going inside and cleaning the pits and doing these things how we can utilize these uh, things uh, similarly we have the issue of the energy how we can utilize uh, the wind and the solar energy and uh, we can use a better way of these energies in fact yesterday's report i was going through the germany is going to shut down it's all the nuclear uh, power plants in the year 2020 they are going to uh, make the solar energy as the sole energy at the uh, for uh, generating the electricity uh, to run the universities, to run the offices, to run the houses, to run the, you know, uh, these uh, markets. So the solar energy is, was there 
as the renewable energy so they are not going to depend on and the importing of the oil they are not going to be dependent on the uh, nuclear uh, materials and uh, after the uh, blast in the nuclear power plant of the japan in the year 2014 after the tsunami it was a challenge that how we are going to protect our uh, human lives by uh, dissolving these kinds of techniques even though we may get for some time through the nuclear energy um, but it is still hazardous energy people are being affected so uh, by using these uh, platforms i believe personally that this should give us something where we should think about as a national issues what are the current issues are in our country and those issues should be related with the topics those issues should be discussed those uh, the students should pursue the research topics related to national issues related to the local uh, issues whether that is water whether that is energy whether that is technology whether that is uh, medicine so then only these webinars can be beneficial and uh, these webinars will give us the name they can give us the fame they will give us the value they can uh, you know bring the interest in the community they can uh, be uh, the public awareness programs uh, beneficially so i wish that the university uh, will look forward uh, in organizing these workshops more and uh, at the same time i wish the students will participate and they may uh, generate their their interest and they will be more thirsty uh, to know what is the research in the latest areas whether that's in chemistry biology botany zoology or any field since uh, me uh, being from the nanotechnology and it has been now an interdisciplinary area where it has not been just the physics it is just uh, the physics chemistry b b b medical sciences everything has uh, come together so the people should choose wisely their research topics and uh, without thinking that what is going to be uh, uh, is it going to be a masters in chemistry it is going to be a phd in chemistry it is going to be a phd or something instead of he should think about what will be my interest of research in the future because as long as it is interest within a student as long as it is the interest which we as a teachers will be able to generate among the students then only it can be beneficial for our society it will be the justice to the, our education system otherwise we are if we are going to use the same technique of teaching them uh, simply as masters degree and uh, graduate degrees and at the end we are not able to uh, make them aware of latest trends then it will be futile so my suggestions uh, will be that the teachers should also uh, see and uh, in the students that what is new where they can be excellently working where they can be uh, more benefited whether that is a scope wise or the science wise i thank you for giving me the opportunity that i was the one of the speakers in the event and uh, i look forward working with your university in the future and my good wishes and all the best Hello
Thank you, sir. Thanks for your golden words on this hot topic of nanotechnology. Well, on the behalf of the organizing team, I would like to conclude. It has been our pleasure to host participants across India and abroad through this online mode. The participants were keen observers and always were involved with their queries on this hot theme of advanced materials. We were fortunate enough to have eminent professors, scientists, researchers from various institutes and industries across globe. Those who are working specifically in the field of nanotechnology. I thank our experts and eminent speakers from Japan, Hungary, Saudi Arabia, India, DRDO, CSIO, Chandigarh. I'm sure the participants must have benefited by attending this workshop. I'm very much thankful to all the sponsors of this workshop for their generous financial support. We were thankful to Pro Chancellor Professor P. L. Gautam. Professor K. S. Verma, Vice Chancellor, Kadir Point University, Professor M. R. Sharma, and Dr. Khalid Bhatto from King Saudi University, Saudi Arabia, for their continuous support and advices, which has given greatly help towards the successful organization of this mega event international workshop. I sincerely I further thanks the chief guest of this program, Professor K. S. Verma, and the guest of honor, Professor Mahavir Singh from Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla, for kindly accepting our invitation and gracing this valedictory function. I thank all the speakers and the delegates for this enthusiastic participation in this international workshop. I thank Dr. Indu Sharma, convener of this event and the coordinators, engineer Shashikant Munish and engineer Rahul Jamwal, and the technical team associated with this event. I once again thank everyone whose contribution has made this workshop successful. Doctor, going to read Yes, sir. This five-day international workshop was focused on advancements of for futuristic engineering applications. The whole session was divided into five days. The very first session was headed by Professor Doctor P. B. Burman, who had talked about the shape effect of hydrogen response of platinum nanoparticles. The second session was headed by B.C. Chohan sir and his focus session was on tiny and unseen metal. The third session was headed by Dr. Khalid Bajusam who talked about the ceramic oxides, their multifaradic and magnetic properties for different applications in the engineering field. This was concluded on day one sir. The next day was concluded by Dr. Ravi Kumar from NIT Hamirpur, Dr. Atul Thakur from MIT University, and Professor Dr. V. S. Rangaraji. They talked about the functional oxide materials and applications, nanomaterials and the nanoparticles, how to synthesize them. The third day, we were having international speakers, Dr. Tej Singh from Saveria Institute of Technology, Hungary, sir. He talked about the green synthesis of nanomaterials. Then Dr. Sachin Tejan from Uttarakhand, G.B. Pant University. He talked about nanocomposites and applications, various engineering applications of nanocomposites. Then Dr. Sanjeev Verma from DRDO Chandigarh, sir. He talked about the smart materials for defense systems. It was quite impressive talk. 
when we were headed by the different systems for that were utilized the nano materials and advanced materials for defense systems in indian army then dr subhashan from nit hamirpur talked about material characterization and dr sanjeev soni from csir csio chandigarh sir he talked about the plasmonic photothermal cancer therapies then dr dinesh pathak had concluded the session on nanofibers based on titanium oxide for filtration and protection from various viruses like covid-19 sir in today's session dr samir kumar talk about the advanced nano engineering materials sir so these were the 13 sessions concluded by various eminent speakers professors and scientists those are related with this field of nanotechnology sir and uh, futuristic engineering applications were also discussed during this five day international workshop sir sir professor mahabir singh has also joined sir now yes 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 <laughs> organizers let us listen dr mahavir singh first please uh, let me introduce professor dr mahavir singh sir for you professor dr mahavir singh is working in the department of physics in himachal pradesh university shimla his skills and expertise are in the field of ferrites magnetic properties magnetization particle size and thin films he has more than 314 publications in national and international journals he has com uh, completed more than 8 projects he has more than 3500 citations he has also served as vice chancellor of I iec university badi so now i would like to request professor dr mahavir singh to address the audience please please sir okay thank you thank you nikeshi for uh, introducing me uh, i am sorry that uh, because of uh, as a uh, i am busy in evaluation of inspire program of state i am as a jury member uh, under the banner of department of science and technology and nif so uh, because this is academic assignment and uh, my uh, it's my privilege that i always uh, you know take actively take part in such kind of activity but i am sorry that because of you know uh, uh, because of this inspire so uh, i was uh, uh, not able to you know uh, i could not uh, even listen the talk of my student uh, dr khalid but uh, uh, i want to mention uh, few things for young researcher uh, as you know dear friends uh, uh, last last month i was among the 2% of the stanford university list of the scientist so on the ex uh, my experience last 30 years in the area of magnetism uh, uh, right from bulk to nano material and other co core area uh, i want to tell positive about the magnetic material as as we know all we know that in nano material there are various burning issue like toxicity uh, like stability like eco uh, like pollution like eco friendly like cost effective so there are lot of issue in nano material but as far as magnetic nano material are concerned they are eco friendly they are their cost is less and they are stable and moreover they are highly useful in health sector uh, in health sector whether that is uh, you know targeted drug delivery or whether that is for the uh, cancer treatment these magnetic nano particle are highly useful and uh, e as you know in the present time we are passing with the covid covid pandemic and i want to mention one thing here uh, as as we know the pcr test uh, sometime it gave us wrong uh, results because of various you know technical errors and personal error for this test we need high skilled uh, manpower 
but as far as uh, magnetic nanotechnology is concerned for the testing of covid uh, uh, virus this uh, this technique is 100% accurate and uh, but it is not available because there are uh, trials are going on so this magnetic nanoparticle uh, nanotechnology is very very effective uh, and there is no need of you know uh, skill uh, skill uh, skill manpower anybody can uh, anybody can read this test so that is the beauty of these magnetic nanoparticle and their future the future of magnetic nanoparticle i can i can say for another 50 years 50 saal ke liye jo magnetic nanoparticle ka future hai that is safe sound eco friendly and pollution free and moreover this magnetic nanoparticle are uh, cost effective their cost is minimum as far as other uh, counterparts are concerned and uh, for uh, this is uh, my suggestion to uh, my inputs to uh, for young researcher that future of uh, in material science especially in nano material is about hybrid system hybrid system means where we have a magnetic nanoparticle where we have a coating with polymer suitable polymer then further coated with you know graphene so these are the future wonder material whether it is graphene whether it is uh, you know uh, suitable polymer like kitosan and magnetic nanoparticle to ye teen ka jo tikdi hai jo magnetic nanoparticle polymer suitable polymer and graphene what is graphene graphene is the by product of carbon ordinary level par jo graphene hai it is a carbon but at nano level it is a graphene which is the future material to ye jo teen ka jo concept hai uh, graphene uh, uh, polymer and magnetic nanoparticle जिसको कि हम हाइब्रिड सिस्टम कहते हैं इसका फ्यूचर बड़ा साउंड है वेदर इट इज इन हेल्थ सेक्टर वेदर इट इज इन कम्युनिकेशन सेक्टर वेदर इट इज इन स्टोरेज सेक्टर वेदर इट इज इन वाटर प्यूरिफिकेशन सेक्टर एंड अदर रेलेवेंट सेक्टर्स आल्सो द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ब्यूटी ऑफ दीज हाइब्रिड सिस्टम इज दे आर कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव दे आर इको फ्रेंडली दे आर बायोडिग्रेडेबल एंड दे आर वेरी वेरी इफेक्टिव so this is the future uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, i think young researcher can see their future uh, but they can work on these materials and another i want to mention one thing here theory theoretician ki aaj ki date mein bahut kami ho rahi hai especially aaj ki date mein people are talking about big data quantum computing and uh, uh, artificial intelligence ye sare sare jo vishay hai ye computer ke vishay nahi hai ye physics physicist ke aur mathematician ke issue hai आज की डेट में अगर बिग रिसर्च हुई है कंप्यूटर में वो कोई मतलब कंप्यूटर के लोगों ने नहीं किया अगर ओरिजिनल देखें कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग में तो ओरिजिनल जो आइडियाज है वो हमारे जो पूर्व हमारे जो ग्रेट फिजिस्ट है या ग्रेट मैथमेटिशियन है उन्होंने ये आइडिया दिए है और वही आगे ले जाएंगे अगर कोई बिग डिस्कवरी आएगी तो ये फिजिक्स का प्रोफेसर मतलब रिसर्चर ही दे सकता है इन दी एरिया ऑफ इवन एडवांस कंप्यूटिंग स्टेज तो जो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस बिग डाटा और जो ये क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग है उसमें आई थिंक फिजिक्स के जो रिसर्चर है या मैथमेटिक्स के जो रिसर्चर है उनसे हम एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं कि वो इसमें कुछ बिग जो है अचीव करे सो विद दीज वर्ड्स थैंक टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर फॉर गिविंग मी द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरेक्ट विद यू मैं आपसे और भी ज्यादा शेयर करता लेकिन क्योंकि मैं बिजी हूं मैंने पांच दस मिनट के लिए एक निकाला क्योंकि स्टेट से हिमाचल के जितने भी स्कूल्स के जो बच्चे हैं जो कि मतलब उनमें से हमने जो है बेस्ट टेन परसेंट सेलेक्ट करना है तो दिस इज लेंथी एक्सरसाइज लेकिन क्योंकि ये आपने मुझे कहा था मुझे अच्छा भी नहीं लगा जब मैंने कल कमेंटमेंट कर दी थी तो मैं मैंने कल भी कहा था कि मैं एटलीस्ट दस 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 मिनट के लिए मैं डेफिनेटली जुड़ूंगा मैं सुबह चार बजे ही पहुंचा हूँ डेली से लेकिन फिर भी मैंने मेरी कमिटमेंट थी तो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर द ऑल द ऑर्गेनाइजर ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटी एंड गिविंग मी द अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक यू डियर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस गोल्डन वर्ड्स आई होप योर वर्ड्स विल बी क्वाइट बेनिफिशियल फॉर अवर यंग रिसर्चर सर सर दिस वर्कशॉप इज आल्सो लाइव ऑन फेसबुक एंड यूट्यूब एंड वी वर हैविंग मोर देन 1000 पार्टिसिपेंट्स विद अस सर करेंटली इन गूगल मीट ओनली रिस्ट्रिक्टेड पीपल आर अलाउड सर ना ना वैभव जी वैभव जी देखो ना बातें तो बोलते हजार लोग पर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर आई एम क्लियर मतलब देखो 50 लोग 50 लोग के जुड़े हुए ना तो 
मैं ये अपने लिए मानता हूँ कि हम लोग ना एक्टिवली पार्टिसिपेट नहीं हम 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 भी कराते हैं यहाँ तो हम अगर सौ लोग होते तो हम पांच सौ पोज करते हैं बट समाइम इट फील की पचास लोग ही जुड़े हुए और हम इसको इंटरनेशनल कदर दे रहे हैं तो हम क्या एक मतलब थोड़ा सा ये मैं आपको नहीं कह रहा हूँ मैं अपने इसमें शामिल जब आपने मुझे ये अपॉर्चुनिटी दे दी है तो आई एम ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ दिस लेकिन ये बड़ा दुख होता है कि इतने लोग शायद आपने रजिस्टर्ड किए होंगे पर ऑनलाइन है भी जो है सिर्फ फिफ्टी फोर ही रिफ्लेक्ट हो रहे हैं सो समाइम दैट फील दैट मीन ऑल ऑफ यू ये कोई आप अपने आप को भी अपने अपने को भी इसमें शामिल करता हूँ हम लोग भी इस इस पार्ट में हिस्सेदार है मतलब ये जनरल ट्रेंड कह रहा हूँ मैं हमारे मतलब ये हिंदुस्तान में यही ट्रेंड हो गया कि ऑनलाइन कितने भी प्रपोजल होते हैं उसमें हम बड़ी बड़ी बातें कहते हैं पर प्रैक्टिकली होती नहीं है This is my general notion. हमें सबको ये एक प्रण लेना चाहिए कि जब हम रजिस्टर्ड होते किसी इवेंट में तो we must actively participate. That is my that is my small request, small you know commission uh, uh, before the uh, all before attending. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your words and and the suggestions, sir. <laughs> so, the chief guest of the event. Dr. K. S. Verma ji is with us, sir. Please. Hello. Hi, uh, my dear participants. Good morning to all. I'm audible to you all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. so a very good morning to all the participants and the organizer i know you are working for the last three four days and uh, very good effort has been made by you all to bring academicians and the youth together especially senior professors researchers and the young scientists i am going through the details of your proceedings it is really hard me that a very wide range of the subject has been dealt with and uh, good research in the different institution overseas and the region they have participated during the proceedings subject matter is also varied and not only the core subject but the application of the nano science i was going through especially the use of nano science and technologies even in dealing with the covid this has been dealt with that's really happy matter that our today's scientists the physicists they are keeping pace with the recent happenings around us it is said that small is beautiful in today's science i can say with certainty and some degree of confidence that in fact a large population of the researchers is engaged in varied fields of science made with physics made with mathematics made with biology environment agriculture and so on but the quality of the research the thinking about the research the perception of the young researchers about the future of the research the understanding understanding of the phenomena around us and the future approach its perception is changing day by day no doubt 
certain core researchers they are within their laboratory framework within their institutions doing excellent work that i have certain reservations and a challenge to the youth that the application of your research to the society at large still has to go a long mile it's a large crowd of the scientists but visibility of the scientists is required you may be very large in number in thousands but i'm yet to see one or two among the thousands and i congratulate you your organizers and others that you have brought in the people who are really visible in the science and especially in nano science they may be small in number but their contributions are much much higher than thousands of others i am proud of you that you have motivated the youth you have brought the seniors the co researchers on a platform where they can talk they can share that what is the future of the nano science but the present day scenario it may be regional it may be national may it be international what is required the perception of the scientist my dear friends let's come out of our laboratories let us come out of our cocoons or the compartments where we are sitting because the society is wanting you society wants us to talk to them not to the other laboratories only and i am proud on you that the career point university scientists they are talking to the people who really matters in the world of science and today it is physics engineering of the mathematics the way the international speakers you have brought together not only just that we are talking to the regional people we are talking to the people who are sitting abroad and engage themselves in the science of nanotechnology that's really creditable because the universities like career point university which are budding universities and one among the best of their contemporaries in scientific achievements may it be a public sector university central universities or the private universities but science has no boundary so friends let's come together wherever we are whatever we are we need to come together we need to understand the needs of the society and how the science can help the society so the day we will understand the perceptions of the society about the science and the application of these sciences to the needs of the society certainly the boundaries of this classification of the universities nationalism internationalism they will vanish it doesn't matter whether you are international or the national or the regional this is your science this is the application of our the global scientist you need not to bother at what is the boundary but please concentrate on your perception 
broaden your perceptions in such a way that science takes the lead in shaping our future society and helping the society to lead a comfortable life in future. So I wish you all a very good future. I appreciate your efforts and will certainly ask you all, let's change our perception. Let's concentrate on the science and the science which is relevant to the society, that will be the great success and appreciate your effort that you have brought many people together who can think of the future and the giving a science. How we need to improve these concepts, how to resynthesize the approach of the future science, which is relevant to us all together. And Corona has given us the opportunity to rechart our future. So friends, I will not take much of your time, but I am really happy Helping the that society you to lead a comfortable life in future. So I wish you all a very good future. I appreciate your efforts and researchers from various institutes, industries across the globe and who are working specifically in the field of nanotechnology. I thank our international experts and eminent speakers from Japan, Hungary and Saudi Arabia. We are thankful to all the sponsors of this international workshop. We are thankful to Professor P. L. Gautam, Pro Chancellor, Professor K. S. Verma, Vice Chancellor of Career Point University, Professor M. R. Sharma, Dr. Khalid Bhattu from King Saud University, Saudi Arabia, for their continuous support and advices that greatly helped in this organizing this international workshop successfully. I sincerely thank our chief guest, Professor K. S. Verma, Vice Chancellor, Career Point University, Hamirpur and guest of honor, Professor Mahavir Singh from Himachal Pradesh University, Shimda, for accepting our invitation and gracing this benedictory function. I further thank all plenary speakers and the delegates for their kind presence and interactive participation. I thank Dr. Indu Sharma, convener of this international workshop, and the other coordinators, Engineer Shashi Khan, Mr. Munish, Engineer Rahul Jamwal and the technical committee members for their kind support. I once again thank everyone whose contribution has made this workshop successful. Thank you. The feedback form will be available in a while. You can check your inbox. for getting those certificates and participation in this international workshop on advances in nanomaterials with futuristic engineering applications. So thanks everyone, thanks for being with us.